ahead and uh, start sharing. Uh, this class is being recorded so that we may share it with those that were unable to attend by attending this class. You agree to have your likeness and voice recorded. If you would like more privacy, you can change your name and turn your camera off. Thank you. All right, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome to the class this afternoon. Uh, it's uh, five o'clock here in Virginia. Um, so uh, happy to be uh, working with uh, people all over the all over the world here. I've seen people from all around. So uh, the class today is on um, building an ANS website and taking good photographs for it. Uh, my wife and I put this together. We've taught it several times. Uh, she is busy today, so uh, I am I am going solo. Um, her background is she she has degrees in theater design um, and is a, a mistress of the laurel. So uh, she is the artistic, more artistic per, part of the pair. And um, I have degrees in uh, aerospace engineering, uh, and I'm a, a pelican and a master of defense. So I'm the more technical uh, person. And uh, normally when we're presenting this, we, we tag team between the different uh, slides, depending on the content. If you would like these slides, uh, you can download them right now from baronloyd.org. Lloyd spelled with a W. Uh, I'll put that in the, uh, my, my se second login here, we'll put that in the, in the, uh, in the chat real quick. All right, we will proceed. So uh, the things I'm gonna talk about today are why do you need an SCA website? What do you put on it? Planning your pictures, composing your pictures, using your pictures, editing, and then setting up your website. I have a big disclaimer. Uh, we are focusing this class just on one easy and free route to producing a good SCA website. There are lots of options and choices you can make differently than what I'm describing that we will not be discussing and won't have time to. Included in that are uh, other website building systems, Weebly, Joomla, Drupal. Um, I, one of my sites, in fact, the Baron Lloyd site is a Joomla site. Uh, so I've, I've tried some of the other ones. I just think uh, WordPress is probably the best choice for a fresh out starting something new. Um, there are other blogging approaches, Tumblr, Pinterest. Um, you can go to other, um, you can pay commercial uh, for commercial hosting. I do that. You can buy your own uh, vanity domain names. Obviously, baronloyd.org is a vanity domain name. Uh, and we're not going to spend, we're going to spend almost no time talking about fair use of copyrighted material. That's a very complex subject. Um, and so feel free to research all of those topics and make other choices. None, none of them are wrong or necessarily wrong. And I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, we'll just let it ring through to the answering machine. So why do you want an SCA website? Um, so to me, the, there, there are a couple of different reasons. Uh, the big one is to make your work visible outside of your local group to help with SCA recognition. So uh, the, the Laurel, and at least in my kingdom, the, the Brandt Level ANS Award, the Pearl, which uh, I do have, um, are polling orders. And that means uh, the, the current recipients of the award uh, advise the Crown on uh, who should be recognized in the future. Um, and in order to succeed at that being advised, it helps for a large number of the people in that, that currently have the, the award to know what you're doing and to be able to see it. So having a website helps people that don't live near you uh, look at your work and, and uh, get evaluated and then advise the crown appropriately on uh, whether they think you're uh, at the right point or not. Um, Atlanta is a large kingdom. I know there are larger kingdoms um, and, it, and it, it's just really hard to, for people at one end of the kingdom or one side of the kingdom to be familiar with what people far away are doing that. Even people that are trying to do a good job of being aware of what else is going on in, this, in the kingdom and advise the crown and are being very studious about it, they may not know what you're doing unless they can see a website 
or um, travel to a big kingdom event. So the other less, less selfish reasons um, are to uh, share your knowledge, your work, your enthusiasm and your topic, and to find other people who are interested in your topic that you can geek with, that you can you know, chat with on Facebook or you know, give a call or you know, hang out with a Penzik and talk about ideas. Um, so all of those things are, are possible to do if you have an SCA website showing off your work. So uh, the first thing you need to, to think about on your site is what is your site going to be about? Is it going to be about all of your arts and sciences work? Or is it going to be about a more specific topic? Um, what is your audience and what is their knowledge of the topic? Um, so, and then start small and expand over time. Come up with something that's that makes sense and you know put a put a couple of pages up and then as as you do more add to it so once you've got a general topic you want to you want to define your site uh, a little bit more break your subject matter into sub -tap topics or categorize it uh, and some ideas for doing that are by year or era by country or region um, spanish english french by something else or you know if it's clothing you can have a sections on shirts, pants, and hats, daggers, axes, and swords, etc. You have about one to three sheets of paper worth of material for each category. Uh, if you do great, if you don't, then combine or subdivide until you get your categories in that kind of a range. Um, and that's a good way to organize things. So what are you gonna put on your site? Well, we've got three pages of this. Uh, the first thing is your own work. That's the most important thing to have on there. Uh, pictures with captions to describe what the pictures are, tutorials on how to do the, the process that, that you're describing, videos, uh, your documentation, PDFs of your handouts. Um, those are all very helpful to, to people both interested in your topic and into for people who are evaluating you for potential award recognition. Um, the next thing you wanna do is have an about you page with your name, a picture of you, contact information, background, assuming it's an SCA site, link to your order of precedent site uh, page on your kingdom's website. Atlanta SOP is actually pretty, really good. I'm not sure some of the other kingdoms that I've played with uh, are not as, as easy to do that on. Um, other useful things to put on, uh, a list of classes taught with links to handout slides or notes, um, references to period sources, and links to other people's work. Do not post other people's work without permission and credit. Uh, fair use is a legal standard for use of copyrighted material without permission. Uh, and that's all I'm going to talk about. Google it for more information. Um, uh, linking to someone else's site is a preferred approach. Do not uh, just, just copy their information. Say, Lord Bob is doing something really cool that's related to this. Here's a link to his site. Go, go look at what he's done. All right, on to photos. Um, so SCA photo etiquette. You need releases from the photographer and the subjects to use on official web pages or newsletters. Um, there are some exceptions to that. Um, read up on it a little bit. Uh, photographers can complete a blanket release for SCA use. I have one on file for my photos with the Kingdom of Atlanta, so that anything that I post, they're welcome to use in their, their web pages or uh, newsletter. Um, when in doubt, ask permission. Uh, all of my photos, and I, I have a a photo page on my website says at the top, please feel free to use this on your own web page. I have a picture of your art and you want to use it on your web page. You know, feel free or you know, whatever. Um, give me credit if you think about it. I prefer that, but it's it's not a requirement. So general photo guidelines take lots of shots. Film in the digital age is free. Uh, battery life is your limiting factor. Uh, I'm old enough that I shot an awful, I learned photography in the film age and uh, film was, you had to be very uh, careful and selective. You don't have to do that anymore. Start with full auto mode. Um, many cell camera, phone cameras are sufficient. They'll do a good job. Larger lens cameras are more flexible. 
and the best camera is the one that you have with you. Your nice camera at home is not going to do the job if, if you're off in an event. Pull out that cell phone if you have to. So um, let's let's compare those those options. So this is the exact same um, necklace on the exact same background. This is a, a necklace of glass beads that my wife made. It has the exact same lighting. The background is black. So my digital SLR, my my older model digital SLR, uh, shows the black as black, and our cell phone um, does some color correction and changes that black to a, a brown background. Um, and you know that's not a bad picture. It's just not faithful to what's really going on. And if that matters to the story you're telling, then the SLR is probably better. Um, you can probably pull the cell phone shot into Photoshop and correct that, but it's going to take a little more work and it's, uh, to get it to be faithful. Take lots of pictures. Remember that your digital film is free. If you use 10% of your shots, you're doing great. So uh, Khalib took lots of pictures of her, her little necklace here so that she would have something that she was happy with, with the right focus on the right details she wanted to talk about. And um, you could see all of, all of what was going on. Um, you know, on the lower right, you can see the little dolphins on the, on the, um, on the green and blue beads that are our are, baronial are badge. And you can't see that as well on the other pictures. Before you take your pictures, look at your surroundings. Uh, the nice picture from Pinzik on the upper right, it was a good cut and thrust tournament, people in nice, nice armor and nice porta johns and nice cars and a, you know, a plastic tent and gear on the ground. There's just no way to Photoshop or crop that picture to make it look good. You're just gonna be unhappy with that uh, in general. Um, and the, the pictures on the bottom gradually get more subtle. So in the, the bottom left, we have a trash can and a, and a fire extinguisher or an electrical box uh, in the middle of the picture. And the, the, the issue in the lower right is a little subtle. Um, right in the bottom middle, there's a plastic bag of snacks, candy or something uh, in that picture um, that you could probably crop around or Photoshop out. Uh, if you wanted to, but it's it's not nearly as obnoxious as the Porter Johns and the, the cars in the top. So try to be aware of those when you're beginning your your photographing, so you don't have to remove them later or be clever with your your cropping. So with that in mind, uh, if you're planning pictures for for your website, what story are you trying to tell? Are you illustrating the object in its entirety, the finished object? Are you describing a technique? Are you documenting a process? Are you re recording an event? Or do you just want to do it all? So plan what you need. Do you need a single shot of the fin finished item? Do you need a close up of the portions of the item? Do you want shots of each stage or a process or, or of a process or technique? Is a carefully composed studio picture or a candid field picture? Uh, going to be better for your purpose. There's no one right an answer. It's just what what is it that you need, and why are you trying? What are you trying to show? Are you trying to show this is what a necklace looks like, or are you trying to show this is the fine detail on the beads that I make? These are actually beads that Cleve made, not that I made. Um, if you're trying to show detail on an item, it can help to have a, a shot of the full item to give context. Then you can show the close-up of the shot with the detail that you wanted to show. So if you know you're showing the uh, buckles on the cuff, uh, it's helpful, or the, the trim, it's helpful to show the whole dress so that you understand where that cuff is and what what it means. Um, um, and then decide, you know. Which is, which is gonna be better for your choice, a, a studio photo or a stage grouping of items? What tells the story the way you want it to be told? So Khalid participates uh, frequently in a, in, a, in a competition at our Kingdom Arts and Sciences um, event called the Pentathlon, 
where you do five related things that tell, tell a story um, from different disciplines, arts and sciences disciplines. Um, so on the left is a picture of all the pieces from her pentathlon entry, which in this case was a travel kit for uh, a child coming to Jamestown uh, that was based on uh, a list from earlier uh, of, of a traveling kit, but she took that list of components and, and moved it into a, a different time period. It's, it's still, you know, you need this many pairs of pants, this many shirts, this many hats, that kind of thing. And she prepared the whole kit, including the travel box. So the, all of the pieces are nice all together, but it's, it's, it's um, cluttered. It's hard to tell what's going on. So the detailed close-ups of each piece laid out I think do a better job of showing what each of the, the items are. And maybe you want both. Maybe you want to tell that story that it's a pentathlon entry and then show all of the pieces and describe what each of those are and why you included them. Um, so the next question is, how do, you, how do you compose your picture? So this is the same necklace posed four different ways. What's most? What's the most interesting way to put that on your on your website? You know, is it just a top down view showing it? Do you want it full expanded into with an oval, kind of like if you were wearing it, or the you know the bottom left? Only the center is in focus. The the near and the far part of it are out of focus or out of the depth of field uh, because of the lens I use, um, which is good and bad. It makes it a little more interesting, but it makes it hard to see the detail. So it really depends on what you're trying to convey, which picture is going to be best. Um, similarly, different angles of light and cameras can give you a very different effect with the exact same uh, object. So experiment, try things, and, and work until you get something that you like and that look pops um, for your particular application. Um, horizontal or vertical, um, take both, uh, especially if you don't know exactly how you're going to end up using the picture. Um, otherwise, you're guaranteed to want the one that you didn't take. Um, so if you have, you have more than something, then it's more likely to work. You can rotate and crop a picture, but they can look odd when you do that. And, um, you know, if you're at a 45 degree angle, it's hard to crop to do that. It takes a couple of steps in, in Photoshop to rotate it, crop it, and rotate it back. Um, and in other tools, you might not be able to do it at all. Um, is the scale in your picture clear? If necessary, include a ruler or a coin to illustrate the size. Um, you got to be careful doing that. Um, the silver coin in the middle picture, what coin is that? Is that a quarter or is that a dime? Is it a nickel? I don't know, the way it's washed out, we can't tell. So that makes it hard, hard to tell. On the upper right picture, is that, is that a, an inch ruler or a centimeter ruler? Can you tell? Uh, the divisions are in tenths, but it could be an engineering scale on, a, on inches. But it's probably centimeters and millimeters, given that it's tenths. But you shouldn't have to be able to, you shouldn't have to, to back out that information. And on the bottom right, you can actually tell that that's a penny. And if you're an American or familiar with American coinage, um, then that probably gives you the scale that you need for these um, handmade needles that Khalib did. Um, there are lots of ways to position your work. So um, uh, Khalib regularly teaches classes on um, uh, these uh, Anglo-Saxon ring pouches and, and making them. She's done it at Penzik a number of times and, and other events. And so this is her favorite ring pouch. And on the left, it's brand new and it's on her hip. And in the middle, it's laid flat on just a white background. And it's, I don't think it's very interesting. And on the right, we posed it on our photo booth with a nice background. And it's a fair bit older. It's got a lot more personality. I, I think it's still, it, that's maybe the most interesting uh, of the pictures, even though it maybe doesn't show you the detail of how it works quite as well as the one that's on the hip.
So if you're trying to show clothing, the best picture of the garb will be a picture taken of you wearing it. If it doesn't fit you, put it on a, um, uh, an appropriate person or on a dress form. So this is the same dress in all three pictures. And on the left, it's just hanging on a hanger in, in, in our living room. And on the middle, it's on a dress form. And on the right, Kaleeb is wearing it while she's demonstrating a warp-weighted warp loom at, a, at an event. Um, so that's much more interesting. You can tell how the dress fits. Um, and there's just more impact to that picture than either of the other two pictures. So unless you're trying to you know, zoom in on the embroidery on the neck, neckline or on the cuff or something, I think the rightmost one's gonna be the best choice. Um, if it was important, we could have her pose um, in, a, in a way that would show the dress a little bit better, but uh, it really depends on the story you're telling. Checking my time. Um, please iron your clothing. If you're taking the time to make a web page of your work, make sure it looks the best it can. This means removing wrinkles, pet hair, lint, et cetera. Control what the viewer can see by watching your background. So, you know, this is just the, the beige rug in our living room. That's maybe a little bit better than the, uh, the closet door and the doorknob background on the previous picture. Um, it's just, but it's still not great. It's just kind of neutral. This would be better if we could put it on an appropriate size person to wear it. Uh, but this is uh, this particular piece, I think, is a child's garment, and our children are no longer the right size for it. So, if you're doing how-to pictures, uh, if possible, plan what you're going to do that you're going to write the article or a web post or whatever before you start shooting pictures and before you start doing the work. If possible, have someone else take the pictures of you doing the work. Um, because um, it's hard for you to hold your hands in a way that's demonstrating what's going on and take the picture. Um, so you know how to hold your hands to show what's important, and then you can direct the photographer to point at what it is uh, that you're trying to emphasize with that particular story. You may have to repeat those pictures if you didn't explain to the photographer exactly what you wanted. And again, take lots of pictures, especially if you're doing something that's difficult or impossible to repeat. Uh, you can always skip using a picture. Again, you know, we typically, for this kind of work, if we lose, use 10% of the pictures, we're doing great. Um, so just, you know, that digital camera has nearly infinite storage. Just keep, hold the button down and take lots of angles and hopefully you'll get what you want. So uh, Kaleeb has done a lot of work in dyeing. Um, and so she um, wanted to show a process of how to do the dyeing. She grew the plants, she harvested the plants, she, she, she uh, processed the plants, um, she uh, got the, the, the fiber, she dyed the fiber, and all of the shots were taken at completely different times. Um, so they're not consistent. They're not necessarily of the same components. I mean, they are, they are showing the process, but it would be nice if this is the yellow dye. This is the plant that's going to produce the yellow dye. Here's, here's it harvested. Here's me processing it. Here's, here's the yellow dye based on in different shades, based on how long I soaked it. And then here's the final process. Well, that's not exactly what, what we have here. It would have been a better story if it was, but it's close. So home photo studios, uh, to, produce, to photograph a, a single item, it is helpful to have a small studio so you can control what the viewer sees. Uh, and you can make a small studio or purchase one. We did both uh, for, for the purposes of this class, and we prefer the purchase one because it stores almost flat. So that's the, the folded up um, photo studio on the, the left, it's pretty small. And on the right, you can see it uh, deployed, the background in it, um, and beside a, a handmade one. And I'll talk more about that at the moment. Uh, the, they're called photo tents. They start at about $14 on Amazon, but watch your sizes. I think the $14 ones are about eight inches in diameter, therefore, rings and watches and very small things. And if that's what you're doing, if you're a jeweler, that's fine. 
but we're producing larger artifacts like that, like, like pouches or necklaces, then you want something, I think ours is about an 18 inch nominal dimension. Uh, and that, that gives you a lot more flexibility. And ours came with two lamps uh, that went, that went, you could put on either side to uh, light through the translucent sides to give you a nice diffuse light. And it came with several different color backdrops uh, that you could hang and then curve down so that you have no, no seam, no visible fold in the backdrop. So if you want to make your own, if you're, you're too cheap for a 14 to $20 um, light tent, this is a way to do it. Uh, choose your a cardboard box of appropriate size. Uh, cut away most of the top uh, and the, um, all of the top. That, that's going to be the side that you're going to shoot through and then cut away most of the sides of three sides, what will be the deployed top left and right. Um, take two layers of cheap interfacing over the sides. Uh, just about anything, you know, that, that was a good choice for us. You could use plain white cloth that was particularly thin as well. Um, you probably don't want anything with color or much texture because that will um, uh, mess up your light. Um, make a backdrop with uncreased gradual curve of, of, of poster board. And then the light there that's shown with the little tripod is one of the ones that came with the, uh, the purchased uh, light, uh, the purchased uh, photo tent or light tent uh, that we were using with this uh, homemade light tent as well. But you, you have lots of flexibility with that. Uh, and then you light the sides, it gives you a nice diffuse light and you can take pictures of your objects. Cropping, um, you want to you want to crop your pictures to focus the um, in your attention on what you want want the attention to be, and it'll reduce the resolution and file size for web use, which will load faster and fit the page better. That's probably becoming less of an issue now that we're not on uh, dial-up modems and are on high-speed internet, but there are still people who may be trying to load your, your web page in, in an order meeting while they're off at a camping site that has almost no cell signal. So having a efficient use of your um, your pictures is a good thing. Clean up the background noise on your picture. So uh, these are the, the exact same picture of um, uh, the, one of Atlanta's Queens Rapier tournaments. And at the top, you can see uh, we've got lots of um, signage and modern things in the background that, that are distracting and not necessary for the picture. And in the bottom, I've cropped it a little tighter and then I've gone in and painted painted out the background with just the, the same beige that the upper wall is. And it's a much better picture. You can, you can see the people much better and you're not distracted by the Dick Sporting Goods sign behind my head or the Bulldogs logo. Uh, more cleaning of your background. Try to crop the photographer out of the shot before posting. Uh, I hope you can see the photographer in both of these. We did not crop it. Uh, they're, they're pretty good pictures of people getting awards in court, but the photographer is not part of the story, and it'd be better if they um, weren't in the picture when you posted it or shared it. Um, when you get to using your photos in your website, watch how you direct your viewer's eyes. This is something that wasn't obvious to me as an engineer, but was obvious to my wife as an artist. So I'm going to show you these two pictures. and. Um, and then I'm going to show you the exact same pictures reversed. And this one is preferred because you are directing your, your, your viewer's eyes back toward the center of the picture, back toward the center of the page, rather than here, whoops, here where they're directed outward and you're, you're losing focus um, in your story. So now that you've got your pictures and you're ready to put them on your website, um, add text to describe what the picture is and to focus attention on your intended detail. Make it clear part of the picture is other people's work. So you know if you're showing off a doublet, um, but the shirt underneath of it is someone else's shirt, you probably want to mention that and say, you know, 
this picture is of my doublet. The shirt was made by Lord Bob, um, but you note the detail on my, my doublet. So let me talk about um, my, my opinions on SCA photo etiquette. Do not distract from court or other ceremonies. You are not the focus, um, photo pun not intended, of um, the attention. It's the person that is getting the award and the royalty that is presenting it. Don't use a flash. Stay put. Don't move around, jump around to try to get an angle. Stand out of view of people watching the event off to the side or on the floor down front. Uh, since I'm in a fair number of orders um, and we get called up when people are getting awards, I will sit cross-legged down front where the only people that can see me are the crowns. Nobody in the audience can see me. I'm not distracting from anything, but I can get a nice close shot of people swearing fealty or getting their awards. Um, if I show up in event, event pictures with a camera on my face, one of the two photographers was in a bad spot. Um, and distracting from things that they shouldn't be. So here are some bad pictures. I want you to, to help you uh, learn from our mistakes. On the left, um, I went to Penzik. This was a Penzik event early on when uh, just after digital cameras were, were becoming available. And I very cleverly decided to save battery life and extend my battery life so I could take more pictures by turning off the preview screen on the back of the camera. Uh, and that worked. I mean, I was able to take more pictures, but it meant that I didn't notice when I had bumped the camera into some weird mode and um, ended up with a significant number of pictures that were overexposed. Um, and that was bad. Uh, I, later on with uh, Adobe Lightroom, I was able to recover some of those mostly, but it took some advances in technology and and um, some years in order to be able to do that. And um, my wife has never quite forgiven me for that. Um, so that red white, red and black tent earlier in my bad picture with Porta Johns, um, here's a port being held in that tent on the field at Penzik. And your, the human eye can, can adapt really easily and you'll see colors to your brain what seems normal, but it looks awful on, on my pictures. Yeah, it's really bad and distracting. So when I ended up pick, posting these pictures, I ended up converting them black and white, and then they looked good and, and didn't distract from the event. Um, and the, the picture on the right, uh, court is taking place under the tent and is in shadow. And the list field post is in the foreground. So my camera is pulling exposure off the list post and not off of the court. So again, our eyes could see it just fine, but the camera couldn't. Reshoot if you have to, particularly if you're doing pose shots like this for a website. So the, the first shot on the left is washed out. It's showing lots of lint. Yeah, it conveys what we're after, but it's, it's not ideal. And on the right, uh, it was what I talked about earlier. The center is in focus and the front and back are blurry due to the depth of field and the lens I was using on my SLR. So neither of those are ideal. Uh, so we went back and shot them again. All right, so that's uh, it for photos. Now I'm gonna jump into uh, setting up websites uh, and uh, talk about um, WordPress. So um, um, first look at other websites for ideas to get an idea of what other people are doing and what you like and what you don't like. Here are our websites. Uh, three of them are WordPress sites and they are all very different from each other. Uh, the baronloyd.org site is actually done in Joomla because I wanted to experiment and try something else. Um, but my, my tech blog, which is all modern stuff, um, is, is WordPress underneath, but it looks very different. It has moving pieces, it has slot, you know, it's, it's very high tech. It looks kind of like CNN as opposed to the other sites where uh, you know, I'm using more period looking fonts and, and, the, and it's, uh, a, they're a lot less busy because that's not what I'm trying to convey. Uh, the next step is collect all of your materials, collect all of what you have that you want to put on your, your website, 
locate your existing pictures or artwork. Perhaps you have pictures from 10 years ago that you, you want to talk about how much you, you've improved. And here was my first version of the project, and here was my second, and here's my, my, my latest version. You need to find all of those pictures. Lay your hands on them. Uh, locate your existing class handouts, papers, links, everything that you want to put on the website and collect them or write down where they are, whatever it is that you, you want to be able to do so that they, you can lay your hands on them when you actually start building your site. And then once you have a list of what you have, figure out what it is that you still need. Do you still need new pictures and new descriptions? So go out and make those, make a plan to produce those uh, before you sit down to actually make your web page because you'll be frustrated if there's something that you want and you haven't made it yet, or you haven't taken a picture of it yet. So um, I have a, a web page that's a lot of historic martial arts. So here are all the pictures, here are a bunch of pictures uh, that, that we took for that web page. And then here's a bunch of articles that I've written uh, that I wanted to, to link onto my web page as well. So I put those all in one place so that I could, when I was ready to, to use them, I could. Uh, there was a quick question about photos. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, you've mentioned uh, Photoshop quite a few times, and mm -hmm. albeit from it already being a little price prohibitive uh, or cost prohibitive, they've also changed to now more like leasing the tech, the software rather than actually outright buying it. Do you have any suggestions for open source sci uh, software that is like Photoshop or anything that's a bit cheaper? Um, you're, you're exactly right. I do have a slide later where I talk about that, but I'll answer it now too. Um, I own Photoshop. I have one of the last buy it once versions of Photoshop uh, because I don't, don't believe in, in subscribing. I don't like that. It doesn't seem like good value to me. Um, and it does most of what I need. Um, there are free, there's free software where like the GIMP, um, which works like Photoshop, which means it's a little hard to use. Um, and you need to know what you're doing. Um, maybe I'll, I'll put together a class for, for a later symposium on using the GIMP um, because it's, it's hard. And that stands for Graphic, Inter Graphic Image Manipulation Program. It's not a, a slur, it's a, an abbreviation. Um, and then there are less expensive commercial uh, software out there, uh, and I forget the names, they're on that slide. And actually within WordPress, uh, you can do some simple cropping and rotation. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a moment. So it really depends on what you need to do. Um, I do some of my manipulation within uh, PowerPoint. You can drop your picture into PowerPoint, then change the colors around, change the scaling, and then you can screen grab the piece that you want. So there are lots and lots of tools out there that you can tweak. Um, the Windows snipping tool is a wonderful thing. Uh, so all of these screen grabs of, of pictures and uh, file lists, I, I generated by using the using the Windows snipping tool. Great, thank you. I apologize for jumping ahead. No problem. Uh, it it might have been logical for it to be with photos, but it's. <laughs> I think it's logical where it is too, but but yeah, you you had good timing. Um, so the next step is to pick a name for your website. Uh, it could be your SEA name, your name and your title, uh, the topic of your work. So we were surprised to find that Learn Fiori was available uh, when we wanted to have a website about uh, Fiori's um, 1409 historic martial arts work. Have a couple of different ideas ready. Probably the most obvious things will have been taken. Don't worry about a .com, .org, .net, et cetera, extension. For this purpose, we're gonna, we're gonna create a free site at, at, on WordPress, WordPress's uh, servers. Um, if you want to spend money for a different, for your own domain name, you can do that as well. I do, but um, um, you don't have to. So the next step, um, and this is starting to get WordPress specific, go to wordpress.com, click on start your website, create or log into an account, type in your first website name idea, and it'll give you a bunch of options. Um, some of them will be free and some of them will be, you can pay money. They'll, they'll set you up a domain name for it if you're, if you're willing to pay for it. 
Repeat until you find an available choice that you like. And then write down your final site name and password. It's going to be embarrassing if you can't log in and update your website because you've forgotten your password. You're going to have to repeat it. Then you go to uh, your web, the remembering the website that, that, and password that you've created. Um, open on your, your web browser, Chrome, Internet Explorer, whatever it is. Um, go to your website slash WP dash admin. And if you've created a, web, a free website on WordPress, that is probably bob.wordpress.com slash WP dash admin. But you could have, if you paid for it, you could have gotten bob.com or, or, you know, some other option, uh, paid option. Then you log in with your username, which is your site name, uh, probably, or your or email and your password is necessary. And then you'll get uh, an image that looks kind of like the bottom right where you, you have your dashboard. And that's how you're going to interact with, with WordPress from here on out. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Uh, there can be different splash information up top, um, depending on where you've logged in uh, and what they're trying to uh, promote. And all of the things that you want to do are arranged along the left-hand side. So these four items on the left, posts, media, links, and pages, add things to your site. Your themes, your menus, your widgets, lots of other settings are hidden under the appearance button. So those are the main things that you're going to want to play with. And we'll talk about most of those here as we, we move on. So themes, themes define your overall layout. See wordpress.com slash themes for hundreds of options. Um, if you noticed, uh, we call back uh, Lloyd Tech my site looked very different than the Learn Fiori site. That was all done with a theme. That was how it was set up. You'll replace all the pictures and the text from the theme later with your own information. Just pick something that, that appeals to you that, that will be consistent with what it is that you're trying to show on your website. Uh, they can completely change the look and feel um, very easily. Um, so the top theme there is the default theme, at least the time at the time that I was creating this class called Dara. And the theme on the bottom right is one called 2010. And I like that one a lot. I use it on a number of my websites. So to get at that, you go to the appearance menu, select themes, and you scroll through the list and select one you want to try. Um, since I already knew I liked 2010, I just search for 20. And there are several different ones with 20 in the name. Um, some of the themes will cost money. Uh, and there are a great, uh, a large number of free ones to try. You can select preview or activate to view it with the data that you have on the website. If you haven't added anything to your website, there's dummy data there. Uh, to start with, you can still see what's going on. And see how it works. And switch it around as much as you want until you're happy. And later on, six months from now, you can change it again if that's what you want to do. So, um, and then once you have a theme, you select appearance and then customize. Um, and you use this menu to customize your theme. You set your site title, the image used at the top of the page, your color scheme, your fonts, all those things can be set to customize the theme once you've selected it. Um, the site identity, for instance, gives you what appears at the top of the page and on the on the little tab when you're when somebody's browsing your site. Um, and once you have changed something, you have to hit the blue button to publish and save your 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 changes. Some of these settings are also can also be found under settings slash general. Um, so there, you can set them in two different places. Um, either will change the same information. So now, now you're ready to start assembling the pieces for your website. Um, you want to upload your pictures, your PDFs, your files. Uh, WordPress calls these media. All these things media. That's the magic nomenclature to know, uh, to, to enable to deal with it. You can upload some pictures or PDFs for your site. 
if you can reduce the pictures, the resolution of the pictures before uploading, you'll save space and time. And your free site, last I checked, was limited to a total of uh, three gigabytes or 3,000 megabytes of storage, which is a fair bit. But if you're uploading a lot of large pictures, you can, you can use that space up very quickly and run out of space. And then you're going to be forced to delete things or resize, and that's going to be a pain. So if you click on media, it'll bring up your media library, uh, and it'll show the pictures that you have. These particular four pictures were the ones that were included with my new site, just so that the, the, the web page looked like something and had some pictures in it. Um, click this button up top that says add new uh, to add your own pictures. And then drop and drag your pictures into that um, box where it says drop files anywhere to upload. So I'm uploading a, a stack of pictures or just one picture of us doing a, a particular historic martial arts stance uh, into my media library there. Um, Real quick before you move on, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm just Go letting you know we are at our five minute mark. Okay. Um, and you can go over for five minutes if you need to. Okay. I think we'll probably be just about right, but I appreciate that. Um, scaling and cropping and rotating is possible within WordPress. You hit the edit image button under the image, and there are some very simple tools to crop and rotate uh, an image. Uh, pages. Um, are the next nomenclature. These are um, allow you to use simple word processor tools to write text. Uh, keep in mind your target audience. Add your pictures to illustrate your words. Uh, edit and tweak the page until happy. And remember to hit the update button, uh, which will be a blue button on the top right. We'll show that in a moment. And then check your work. Open another browser and go directly to your site without the slash WP admin. Uh, and it will see, and you can see what your page looks like. And you need to refresh it to see any changes that you've made. So here's the pages walkthrough. You, it starts you with five sample page. You, you, you should edit these to start, and then you can add more when you want. There's an add new button there. Select all pages under page to see all of your current pages. Um, hover over the home page, which is what's going to pop up by default, and select edit under it. And then you get a nice little word processor with which you can see you know, bold italics, bulleting, quoting, linking, all of those things. And on the right there is that blue update button that you need to do to save your changes to make, make, make things go. So editing your page is just like using a word processor. You set the name of the page in that box. Um, you set your um, text in this window. Um, you can hit the add media button to add one of your previously uploaded pictures to the page. And then the blue update or publish button. If it's a new page, it'll say publish. If it's if it, you're editing an old page, it'll say update uh, to save your edits. Um, try multiple times, uh, check it, tweak it, save it, check it again until you're happy. Um, if you want to add links to your page, um, which is a very common thing to do, um, easy to do. Type a description of the item you're linking to, hi highlight it, then click on that chain icon to add a link. That's the, the button to add a link to um, the highlighted text and type in the web address. And remember to hit the blue update button to save your work. Um, posts are slightly different than pages. Uh, they're intended for uh, a blog. If you, you can have a blog page as your front page or a later or somewhere else in your page. Um, and um, the, you edit it very much like a page, the, the previous functionality with a page, except uh, you're probably shorter and they're all gonna end up in one place. Um, you can make that, that, that your blog your front page if you want later on. By default, it is on most WordPress installations, it is not your front page. Um, but only do that if you're going to do regular updates about what you're doing, teaching, or have recently added to the site. I do that on most of my sites. Uh, 
WordPress allows comments and discussions. Um, and if you're going to be active on your site, you can allow readers to respond and discuss posts. Um, I don't recommend that due to spam issues, um, although it is a good way to engage with people. Facebook or a full featured blog are maybe better choices for commenting and discussing. If you want your blog to be your front page, that is set under the settings menu and then choosing reading. And you choose that your homepage is either your latest post, which would be the blog, or a static page. And then you can tell it which static page it is. Menus um, are useful for navigating a, a more complex site. Depending on your theme, you may have one or more menus. You used to organize your pages and assist your readers in finding what you're, they're interested in. Select appearance and then menus on the left side control in order to set up your menus. Um, here are some menus on the Learn Fiore site. All items on this um, in this menu are on our site except for the link to the YouTube channel that we have. And that's an external link. So, um, and this is what the menu functionality looks like. You drag and drop, you define new ones, you add to it. Um, and um, I'm gonna go a little bit faster so that we have time. Uh, if you want a submenu item, you indent it by dragging it slightly to the right, and then it becomes a sub, sub item. So the, the photos and videos item on the top left uh, of the website, has a Learn Fiori YouTube channel as, as a drop down piece. And then that's a custom link to another page, to another site. Widgets are an advanced topic and they, they make the, the things that go along the, the right hand side, at least in this template, um, to help with navigation or link a video or link keywords or topics, all kinds of things. And you can add them to the side or the back footer of your page sometime. Look at other pages for ideas. You can get pretty complex with widgets. Um, and you drag and drop them. Now, you've got a website, share it. Announce it on your Facebook page, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, uh, your Kingdom's Wiki page, et cetera. Include a link. Add it to your Facebook profile. I have all three of my web pages linked on my Facebook profile. Put it on your class handouts so that people can know where to go to look at for more information about what you're doing. Put it on business cards uh, that are available for people to take at your ANS display. Give it to your peer or other SEA ANS friend so that when those laurels are talking about you, that friend can pop up and say, here's their website, look at all the great things they're doing. Um, and that will really help to, to, to formulate the discussion so that they're talking about things that you're really doing rather than Vaguely, what does she do? Does she brew? What? I'm not sure. Here's her web page. And th that way the story gets told the way you want it to get told. Make a habit of posting your pictures of your latest projects, your class handouts, as soon as you create them. Uh, if you're using your site's blog, highlight your latest work, upcoming classes. If you look at baronloy.org, you can see I'm posting at least monthly on upcoming classes or new videos I've shot, those kinds of things just so that people know what's going on. And consider mentioning your latest project being added to your site on your Facebook wall. Your friends are following you for a reason, they're interested in what you're doing, it's okay to do that. You wanna do more with WordPress? One, there are two classes on WordPress being taught tomorrow by other people. Uh, those both sound very interesting, although one is opposite my class, so that one's a little less interesting. Uh, but um, if, if you are interested in WordPress, go, go attend those. Um, WordPress itself has a lot of tutorials on, at learn.wordpress.com. There are YouTube tutorials, there are text walkthroughs all over Google, and there are literally thousands of books on WordPress. Um, so again, these slides are available for download at baronloyd.org. And I have additional slides, another 10 slides that I did not intend to present that are included on photo exposure theory and editing software uh, that it, you can review at your leisure. Um, if you download the slides. So we are just about out of time, but if somebody wants to ask a couple of quick questions, we can. Um, I, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just wanna say, uh, this is the class I didn't know I needed to have, and <laughs> thank you very much. Good. Uh, I was wondering about photo hosting. 
if you have options other than using WordPress, because as you said, it builds up pretty quick. If you know of any free ones. Um, most of the sites like SmugMug and um, I've forgotten because I don't use them. Uh, there, there are a couple others. Google, Google Photos. Um, you can you can share albums and 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 such on have free modes so you can try them out and you know they'll be more limited than the paid modes um wordpress does have some themes that are more suited for photo galleries and i think that's what one of the classes tomorrow is going to be talking about at least from the description i haven't taken the class so i may be putting words in her mouth um so i, I think that that may be a good solution too um I'm paying for hosting, so I have fairly unlimited space, so I don't worry too much about it. Um, but um, uh, I, I don't really have much experience with with any of the commercial photo hosting. Um, okay, sites. thank you very much. So, quick question: What was mm -hmm. the last full version of Photoshop before they went to the licensing model? um i'm not sure let me see what i've got over here if it says um i think it says cs6 is is what i have um there may have been one a little later than that but um uh that that's a fairly fairly late in the the paid for option and i paid for a student teacher license for a production suite so i got premiere and illustrator and a bunch of other things with it and i think i paid 300 dollars 